In this video, I'm going to describe some of the basic building blocks of the digestive system and how its anatomy is important for the digestive process of all macronutrients. The objectives of this video are to identify the organs that comprise the digestive tract, to describe the structural components of the digestive tract organs, describe the key features of both the main and accessory organs, and to explain the fate of inadequately digested materials. One way to think of the digestive tract is a long, convoluted, hollow tube. Food only travels in one direction in ideal cases. The digestive tract consists of a variety of organs which we can categorize into main organs and accessory organs. Main organs are the, food that, are the organs that come in direct contact with the food, while as accessory organs do not come in direct contact with food, but provide extra substances that help in the digestion and absorption. The main organs consist of the mouth, the esophagus, the stomach, the small intestine, and the large intestine. These comprise the hollow tube by which I described before. Some of the important accessory organs include the salivary glands, the liver, the gallbladder, and the pancreas. Remember, these do not come in direct contact with the food, but instead secrete things into the main organs to allow for digestion. To allow for food to travel in only one direction, digestion is compartmentalized into these main organs. And to prevent food from going in the wrong direction, these organs are separated by a series of gateways that are called sphincters. Sphincters are a set of muscles that when constricted do not allow food to pass through, but when relaxed do allow food to pass through. Between all of the main organs, there is a series of sphincters. For example, between the esophagus and the stomach is the lower esophageal sphincter. There's another important sphincter that we'll talk about in this semester, and that's the sphincter of Odi. It doesn't separate compartments, but it is the sphincter that allows for the secretions from the bile, the gallbladder, including bile, to be secreted into the small intestine. Now we're gonna spend a few minutes going through each of the main compartments, describing what they do and how they affect our digestion. The first step is starting in the mouth. That's where taste and smell allow us to detect the food. This is part of the cephalic response, which actually triggers some of the digestive system uh, happening below the mouth. An important aspect of what goes on the, in the mouth is mechanical disruption of food, largely by chewing, but also by churning via the muscles in your tongue and your cheeks. In your mouth, there's a variety of salivary secretions from your salivary glands that provide both enzymes and lubrication to allow food to pass easily into the esophagus. The next main organ we're gonna talk about is the stomach. In the stomach, mechanical disruption occurs, but instead of chewing, now it's by churning, and this is by constriction of the large muscles around the stomach. In the stomach, there's a large amount of acid secretion, which makes the pH of the uh, liquid much lower. This aids in both the breakdown of the food and also to allow for the digestive enzymes, in some cases, to become active. This is where digestion really starts, is in the stomach. However, the vast majority of digestion occurs within the small intestine. The small intestine is by far the large, longest part of our digestive system, and this is where most absorption occurs. Not only is the small intestine very long, but it has an extremely large surface area due to the villi that protrude into the lumen of the small intestine, increasing the surface area. The gallbladder and pancreas are two important accessory organs that help the small intestine do its job. They allow for secretion of enzymes, bile, and neutralizing bicarbonate. This bicarbonate neutralizes the acidic pH that started in the stomach to allow for the enzymes to uh, function correctly within the small intestine. Most of the small intestine enzymes work best at a neutral pH. These are very important to aid in both the digestion and absorption, again, most of which occurs in the small intestine. The last compartment we're going to describe is the large intestine. This is where the gut microbiota exists. Any food that isn't absorbed in the small intestine passes to the large intestine, and that food uh, is, interacts with the gut microbiota. Sometimes this allows for more breakdown of food and some absorption in some cases, but a lot large role of the large intestine is to store food until it's ready to be excreted. So those are the major parts of the digestive system. So spend a minute and think ahead. Pick one of those either main or accessory organs or one of the sphincters and think about what does it do? 
Now think what would happen if one of those main accessory organs or the sphincter, if its function was impaired in some way, so that it was not functioning appropriately. If that's the case, what would be the effects on both digestion and on your health?